Hi everybody, Liz LePage here, and today I'm going to be doing a short clip video for you all about how to create a collage in On One Layers. We're going to be making this image here, which is actually really, really easy when you have all of your components set out and ready to go. So let me go ahead and jump in and show you how easy it is to do. All right, so I have my folder open with some of the elements that I'm going to be using, including my photo and the nameplate that's going to go at the bottom of the picture at the end. We're going to start out by taking our image into layers. So once I have it selected, I'll go to the right and just select layers. Now it's really, really important here that in the bottom copy options section, you select Photoshop as your file format. That supports a layered based workflow. It allows you to save those layers and re-edit them later if you'd like to. So it's really, really important that you make that selection here. Also, I always suggest editing a copy so that my original photo is the way that it is, and then I'll have my edited version at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to open up my photo. And then on the right hand side of the screen, most of the work we're going to be doing is in our layer stack. This is where our original photo is. Her name is Flower. So this is the Flower the Dog photo layer. And we're going to be adding a texture, a border, and a little element that I created that has her name on it. So let's go over to the left hand side and I'll introduce you to how to access all of the textures and borders that you might want to use. So here on the left hand side, we have something called the extras section. And these are all of the textures, borders, and backgrounds that are free with On One when you buy it. You can also import your own extras, which is really cool. I actually have a whole bunch of paper textures that I like to use on collages like this one, but for today, I wanna to show you the On One extras. So we'll just double click, then jump into that textures category, and you'll see that there are a ton of different types of textures. We could go the paper route, we could go the metal route. The monochrome textures are really, really cool and great for like grungy photo styling. So there's a lot of different options here. Today, we're gonna jump up to the metal category, and that was the one that I used in the image I was showing you earlier. It's right down at the bottom called Rust 3, and we'll double click to apply it. Now, when this dialog pops up, you need to select add as a layer, which adds it as a layer on top of our photo that we already have open. So we're not opening another file here. Click OK. And we've got our rust layer. Now, it obviously doesn't fit well with our image right now. So on the left hand side of the screen, select your move tool. And this allows you to do things like rotate up in the tool options bar. So we can go ahead and just click that rotate button, make it really easy. And then my favorite button right here is right in the middle of the tool options bar. And it's to fill this texture or any other element that you use to fit the photo size or the canvas size that you're using inside of layers. So once I click this, It'll shrink that texture down and then all of a sudden it hugs the edge of my photo. That's my favorite button when I'm using textures and borders. It makes everything so much easier. So once you're done with your adjustments, go up to the top right hand corner and click apply. And then the next thing that we need to do is blend this texture into our photo. Now the best part about the blending options here inside of On One is when we open up the drop down menu on the right hand side of my screen, right on top of the layer stack here. When I open this up and I scroll my mouse over each one of these options, it actually shows me what it's going to look like. Now, obviously there are a lot of different options here and you could go many different routes with this, which is really cool. But the one that I'm going to use today is actually multiply. And one of the reasons why we're going to do that is I love the way that it looks on the background here. So all I need to do is remove it from the dog in the center. So to do that on the left hand side of your screen, you can use either a masking bug or a brush. You can go either way. I really like the masking bug for this because it creates a nice soft feathered edge. And up in the tool options bar, it actually has a preset called vignette. And this is perfect for this image. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It creates a nice oval masking bug, which I can click and drag into place here. I can resize it too, so it's a little too big, 
I can rotate it here on the right hand side to fit her a little bit more. I can feather the edges really well. That's one of my favorite options just by clicking and dragging this dotted line out. So we'll go ahead and feather those edges a little bit more. And then you can also resize it just as a whole, which is really, really nice. So I can make it taller or shorter. I can make it wider on the edges. So if I wanted to make it a little bit thinner, You've got a ton of options with the masking bug, and this is one of my favorites to use, especially when you're working with portraits of animals or people. It fits really well with faces. Now, the other great thing about the masking bug is you can combine it with your brush tool. So I'm going to select my masking brush and just paint off the extra texture here on the edge of her ears. So in the tool options bar, make sure your mode is paint out. We want to remove our texture. I'm going to pop the feathering all the way up to 100 and then I'm just going to kind of scroll that around the edges. Now I'm going to do this really, really quickly so that we can move on to the next step, but you can spend a little bit more time making sure that those edges are really well taken care of. That's all dependent on how grungy you want this to look and how much of the texture you want on your subject. On the right hand side of the screen, I'm also going to lower the opacity of the texture. It's a little intense and we're going to be adding a border and something else on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop that down to about 75. Now to add a border, we're going to go back to our little extras category here and click that back button until we get to our three different folders. I'll double click on borders. And then I'm actually going to go into my favorite border category, camera. This one is great if you want to create a very classic film look. It's got a grungy viewfinder border, and this is the one that I used in the demo that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one again. Go ahead and double click. I'm going to add as a layer. It's going to go through and it's going to be sideways. So we're going to use that little move trick that we used with our texture. We're going to rotate and then fill to our canvas. And all of a sudden it fits exactly to our image. The last thing that I want to do after I apply this border is I want to show you how to add other elements. So if you want to create more of like a scrapbooking page, if you want to add a label like I'm going to do down at the bottom, it's actually really easy to access your own files. On the left hand side of the extras category, there's actually a files section and this allows you to access any parts of your computer so that you can add your own textures, your own borders, you can add other photos, you can combine images together. There's lots of different options here. So up at the top, it's got my pictures folder open. I'm going to go ahead and select my computer then select the folder that I have my element in and it's right up here at the top. You'll see that it's a little nameplate that I created. It's really important that I want to note here. This is a PNG file, which means that I have the ability to access a transparent background so that I can have a strangely shaped object with the correct edges to help blend into my image. So if you're going to be using something like this today, Make sure it's a PNG file with a transparent background so that that shape is maintained when you apply it to your image. So we'll just double click, select add as a layer, and there we go. Now I can shrink this, I can move this around, I can rotate it, I can do just about anything that I want with this. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit for fun, and then I'm going to shrink it down just a tad so that it's not quite so large, and there we go. And once I'm done, just like before, I'll hit that apply button and we have our final image. Now there are tons of different options that you can use when you're creating a collage like this one. You can add your own elements, you can access the ones that we have, and there are a ton that you can make on your own, or there are a ton of free options out there on the web.